Good morning, Heights Church family. Well, who knows, maybe it's afternoon, evening, maybe it's Tuesday at 5.45 when you're watching this, I don't know. But regardless of when you join us, we're so glad that you are joining us. Our mission here at the Heights is pretty simple. We believe in helping people follow Jesus. And there's many different ways that we do that. One of the things that I love about growing in my faith is that we can still do it together. Yes, COVID has really turned a lot of things upside down, but we've been utilizing the YouVersion Bible app as a staff, as a leadership whole, and we picked out a plan to do together. We sit down, doesn't matter if you're a morning person, an evening person, whatever, but you read it, you comment on it. And it's been really interesting to walk through 40 days of this, with people that I dearly love, but I also have been gleaming wisdom from them. And to me, that's an encouragement. To me, it helps me grow deeper in my faith because it's one thing for me to see the scripture, to hear the scripture, to have it impressed on my heart, but to see others and how God is speaking to them, how God is speaking through them, that can be life-giving. And it's really been an encouragement during this season. So I encourage you, if you haven't started this, hey, email the Heights. We're happy to send you some planned suggestions. We're happy to have people walk you through. This is how you sign up. This is how you invite friends. You can do plans as short as three days, as long as 365 days. I haven't delved into if there are any more than 365 day long ones, but that is a commitment in and of itself. So whatever it looks like, we say, hey, continue to develop yourself no matter if we're on our heads, turned upside down or backwards during this season. There's many different ways that we can still engage with each other, engage with God's word, and we can grow in relationship with our Heavenly Father. Another thing, sorry guys, this is just for the ladies, but another way that we can grow, that we can develop our faith, is by going to the women's event in September. You simply go to our app, there's a sign-up form there, and if you might say, hey, what's this Heights app? I'm glad you asked. Search the App Store, the iTunes Store for Heights FC, as in Foursquare Church. You can download it and it has message notes. It has the words to our worship songs. It has a way to give. There's many different things that you can do with that app. But you can also sign up for that women's event. Sorry, guys, girls only. But maybe it's a way for that special lady in your life for you to give her an encouragement during this season. Before we break into worship, I want to tell you how excited I am to continue this series, Blessed. Jacob's going to be up in a few minutes after worship and after me, and he's going to be talking about the pure of heart. And I know that as we've talked about it all week long, there have been many moments that I've had to think real hard, but it's a way that God's moving in and through me. May we join in worship together, but first I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together today, this morning, afternoon, whatever it does look like. And Lord, I ask that we can let ourselves just take a deep breath during worship, that we can lay the distractions of whatever is coming in front of us at your feet, and that we can listen to the words that you want to impart on each of our hearts. May we glean wisdom from your word this morning. It's in Jesus' heavenly and holy name that we pray. Amen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of
Thanks for tuning in to the Heights Church. I'm glad you could join us for our streaming service. If this message speaks to you or brings uh, someone to mind that uh, maybe you should share with, I would say be bold. Be bold and share that with that person. But here, I want to give you some um, follow-up with that instruction. Sometimes we can just want to share something with someone, and, uh, and we, we do with the best of intentions. Uh, we want them to, we, we, it really spoke to us and we really liked it. It was great information. It's something that we just resonated with. And so we think of someone and we just share it out to them. The problem is sometimes we can receive those messages, those posts, uh, those sermon illustrations, that information. And what it meant for us, you might be saying like, hey, I want you to know this. I think you'll like it. Someone might receive it as like, do they see something wrong with me? Do they want me to believe what they want to believe? I have, why are they sending this to me? So I think in the process of why we send stuff to someone, we need to check our own motivation, our own hearts. Why are we sending it? And more importantly, do we follow up? So if we send something, here's a follow-up. It's one thing to send someone a message, but what would it look like to have a follow-up conversation? What is the heart behind while we're sharing it? I think that fits in perfect with today's message. We're in a series called Blessed. And uh, the title today is called Heart Check. And what we've been doing is we've been really going through a, a series of Jesus' teaching, and Christians have come to call it the B attitudes. And, and the big, uh, the bottom line uh, for this week comes out of verse 8, and it's this. It says, blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. Pure of heart. Are we being real with others and ourselves? Are we presenting what's going on on the inside on the outside of us? This last week, I had an opportunity to go to the Oregon coast and uh, facilitate a wedding. One of the days, we had some time off, so we got the family down to the beach, and it's a, it's a wonderful day out, and I had this great idea. I'm like, I want to take some photos. It's like photo op time. So I'm like, all right, kids, I want you to like jump into your mom's arms, and I want you to pose like this and look like you're having fun. And my, my kids were uh, not wanting to do it, and they were fighting me, and they were grumpy, and they were rude. And I'm like, hey, what is your deal? I just want to take some good pictures. And they, they told me, Dad, these are fake. You're trying to make a stage pictures of us having more fun than we're actually having. And I'm like, ouch. Uh, there was some truth in that statement. 
and I did want to take pictures, but are we presenting real life, what's really going on a heart, or is it being staged? Our culture has a way of showing one thing and feeling another. So what, what was Jesus talking about when he was saying pure of heart? Why is a person blessed if they're able to see God? For a moment, let me just tackle this idea from a different angle. Have you ever felt like you were just going through the motions? Feeling like you're disconnected and distracted? You're doing something, you're, but you're, your heart's not really in it. I know what's happened to me. Have you ever played a game and you know someone that's playing the board game or an activity or you're out on a date? Uh, you know they're there, but they're just halfway into it. Their heart's not into it. They're going through the motions. They really don't care. It, it, no matter how much they try to hide it, it seeps out because something's going on in their heart. Well, I believe Jesus wants to meet us in those places. We don't always feel like we're all the way in it. We always, sometimes we feel like our heart's not in it. We just don't care as much as we used to care. And so let's get real. We don't always feel 100%. We don't always have the best intentions on why we do what we do. We can find ourselves in a funk. But here's the thing, we can't stay there. We can't stay in that funk. Jesus has a way of speaking to us and understanding the heart condition of humanity. Connecting with us might seem like uh, that, that God is this cold and distant creator of the universe, but, but Jesus has a way of connecting the dots, bringing us closer to him, understanding his heart for our heart. He wants to bless us. So let's do a, a quick review. Matthew 5, 1 through 8 uh, begins here. But when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to a mountaintop and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said this, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the kingdom, or the inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are all the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And today, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed. What is this simple term? What does blessed even mean? Blessed means God's favor or protection. And I want, to be on, I want to be clear right now. I don't want you to get God's blessing and God's grace mixed up. See, God's grace is a free gift. It's eternal life through Jesus. It cannot be earned. Blessings are given by God. When, Jesus, uh, when uh, we start to figure out, as Jesus' followers started to figure out, that blessings are different than sometimes how we see them. When we understand God's blessing, we start to get a little glimpse of God's heart for his kingdom here on earth. So let's see what I'm talking about. Let's go back to verse eight. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. What is pure in heart? What does that mean, pure in heart? Simply means and translated clean, clear, or pure. Jesus is saying that if our heart is clear, that we will better see God in the world around us. Seeing God. Well, I look back over the last six months. Life has uh, been a tornado in lots of different ways. Uh, there's many times, and uh, I've asked myself this question, God, where are you at in everything that's going on? It's been hard to see that you've even shown up in 2020. I know he's working. I know he's doing things, but I struggle to see him working. It's hard to see God. This is me, I want you to understand. It's hard to see God when we connect the good things in life with being blessed. We see God when things are good, but maybe not when they're bad. So if life is good, hashtag, I have a healthy life, I'm blessed. Man, I just got a new achievement, hashtag, I'm blessed. I got a pay raise, hashtag, I'm blessed. God's working, he's in it, he's providing for me. But what if things are not going well? What if things are being train wrecked? God must not be in it, right? I mean, if that's how we take the conclusion, hashtag, God's not listening. Hashtag, church sucks. Hashtag, no one cares. Hashtag, Portland. Oh, wait, is that too soon? Okay, that's too soon. I have to move on. Sorry. Send your emails to kevin at heightschurch.tv. Good or bad? God, are you listening? Are you silent? How are we letting things come out of us? How, how are we perceiving the things in life around us? What is ruining um, ourselves? Why are we angry? And, and we start to ask God, like, how could people treat each other? How come people are so angry with one another? Where's the blessings in all this? 
see in the Beatitudes, Jesus is trying to get us from being outward focused to an inward focus. What's going on in our own heart? God's not been hiding. We just have not been looking. Let me read this passage again from the message translation. I love how it says it, and it speaks to itself. Verse eight says, you're blessed when you get your inside world, when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. So this world on the inside of us, then you can see God in the outside world. Can you imagine putting those two together? When you get your inside world, your mind, your heart, when you get it on track, we start to see God in the world around us on the outside. I love that image, getting it all sorted out. Not sorting someone else's issues out, but your own. So imagine this. This is the challenge I've seen myself go through and other people go through. If, if life has not been going the way we've wanted it to, to go for a number of years, life has not turned out the way we want it to, we start to make excuses and we start to tell ourselves, man, I deserve better. The circumstances that led me to this situation were out of my control. That person had it in for me. Every turn and twist, there was this issue that always pointed to someone else or, or something else. Every time you look back at your life, the situation and circumstances that you're in in the moment, is it something or someone else's fault? If it is, you might have a problem. How come we can't see ourselves in that equation? What are the motivations that's, that's nudging us to treat people, to look at people, to look at our situations in the way they are? What are the motivating factors in the way that we treat other people? Jesus is honestly pushing those listening to see God and blessings, to look through their own insecurities, for them to get closer to God, to move beyond just being a, a religious person that has us all together, looking like you have it all figured out. Simply, Jesus is saying, is I want you to have this heart to be honest with God, to be honest with yourself. Why are we doing what we're doing? Are we willing to evaluate our own actions and, and where we got to where we are? I felt this one word coming to my heart, and I guess maybe it's preaching to myself, and I want you just to ask yourself, what are our motivations? Do we check our actual motivations? Does our outside match our inside? Do we have the courage to face the ugly parts of our life to move forward? There's one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. I must have watched the VHS tape. I know most of you probably don't even know what a VHS tape is. Uh, 11 times uh, during one summer it was called Never Ending Story. And there was this moment, we had this, this knight that was facing and he was looking at us, uh, 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 this, this gate. And uh, uh, what will happen is, let's see if we can have our picture here. So we have this knight and he has armor and he's, brave and he's warrior tough and there's this big gate going through and and his mission is to get to the other side it's the quest that is he is on but the problem is this sphinx right here they can see into a person are they who they are do they have courage uh what is their heart and the mission about where they wanted to go or are they a fake front and so as this knight goes forward he comes through the gate the eyes open and it shoots a laser and burns the knight from the inside out and then we have next, this, this kid, the hero of our story, who just sees the knight fail. This kid has no armor, no training, and he's not battle-hardened. But here's the thing. He knew the mission he was on. He knew what he was supposed to be doing. His motivations were pure. His heart was to see his kingdom and this world be restored. It was not for his glory, but for his people. And so as he faced this unbelievable fear, there was this moment, the, the knights laying down before him, that, that he presses through the fear, he runs through the gate, and he survives. On the outside, it looked like he could never overcome this accomplishment, but on the inside, he had this pureness of heart to know where he's going and what he was supposed to be doing. Just because we look like we have it all together doesn't mean we do. And those can be one of our greatest pitfalls. This has been the inner battle for generations. We become blind to our own issues. Jesus sees past the lip service and to the heart. Matthew 23, 25 through 26 said this, What sorrow awaits your teacher of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, 
For you are so careful to clean the outside of your cup and dishes, but on the inside you are filthy, full of greed and selfish indulgence. Here's the word, you got to catch it. You blind Pharisees. You're blind. You can't see. Your motivations for, for wanting to connect with God to follow these laws are misguided. You are blind. First wash the inside of the cup of the dish and then the outside will become clean too. You got to fix what's inside before the outside can be fixed. You can't just put up a front. He describes the Pharisees as blind. On the outside, they show they love, they give, they serve, they donate. But on the inside, it's not because they have a heart to love God. It's because they want to put on a show. They preach to others holiness and righteousness, but yet on the inside, they are ugly. So what is our motivation? What is actually in our hearts? What's eating us from the inside out? Some of the greatest people look like they have it all together. And so I don't want you to get mad at me, uh, but I want you to look at the show Ellen. Uh, this show is crumbling apart. They've had four producers quit in the last number of months. They went to producing at home. Ellen's mantra is just be kind. She likes to dance and have fun. But the story comes out that she doesn't live up to her message of be kind. Inside, there's some ugliness, and it's seeping into her staff all around us. Are we honest with who we are on the inside? Matthew 15, 18 through 19 says, but the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. Far from the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. What's clogging our system? What's the negativity, the motivation, sending us down the wrong path? What's that human nature in us, this ugly little thing? If it goes unchecked, our vision becomes blurred. We become self-focused. We start to miss the biggest picture of God's kingdom around us that Jesus set into motion. So what are our motives? What's really on the heart and how do we release it? Jesus gives us the answer in 1 John 1, I says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all of wickedness. Confess, dig deep, face the fear. Sometimes we, we think God's gonna, if we get real with God, we get real with other, he's gonna reject us. You know, those tough moments where we've been rejected in the past when we become real or uh, open or vulnerable. Well, God wants to say, hey, I'm, I'm not gonna reject you. I already know before you know. I just want to see your heart get to the place where you're willing to turn it over to me. David said it this way. David had, David blew it. He was described as having a heart after God. And he, he had some people that called him out on the carpet that were around him. And every time he would come back to God and he says, God, create in me a clean heart. Oh God, renew a spirit within me. That even though he blown it over and over and over again, but he came and says, God, give me a pure heart. Give me this righteousness. I want to see you. And God saw his heart and love, not because he had it all perfect, but because he had this willingness to come and put it all before God. The Lord renewed his spirit. He blessed him in the restoration. Our hearts is this muscle that plumps, pumps blood through our system. If our heart is damaged or blocked, our whole system shuts down. And death is right around the corner. What's the damage in our life that's holding us back? What impurities, what challenges, what struggles are holding us back? Is it laziness, addiction, apathy, anger, bitterness, integrity issues? Do we hate with our hearts and love with our lips? Jesus is saying, as I want you to heal you from the inside out, do we check our hearts? It starts with a self-examination. What is our motivation? What's drawing us to be the people that we are? Maybe it takes a deep, unedited look at what's going on behind the scenes. Do our insides match our outsides? Are we treating people with respect and dignity? Or do we harbor ill will towards others and at the same time pretend to care? And so we end up wandering around saying, God, are you listening? God, do you care? God, are you really in this? God, why am I not being blessed? And all the while, we're ourselves unhealthy, disengaged, and unmotivated. It's always someone else's fault, and the system has failed us. But sometimes we just have to get real. Get over and understand the damage that's in our own life and ask God to, to mend it, those places of broken areas. Do we see God rather than our own way? 
Billy Graham being pure, uh, made this quote, he says, being pure in conduct also includes honesty and integrity in dealing with our fellow man. There's this connection that we have with other people, our motivations to, to be part of the society that we're living in. I'm going to close with this thought. Blessed is the pure heart when they see God. We see an invisible God through Jesus here on earth. That's how they saw it. an invisible God came down in Jesus' form. But there's also another way that we see God here in earth in action. He said this in 1 John 4, 12 says, No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. Imagine that for a moment. If we love one another, we get a glimpse of God. When we love one another, we get to see God here on earth. When we love one another, the motivation to truly care and to see people where they're at. Imagine that if we allowed ourselves to be present in, in the moment. That we, we feel like maybe we haven't had the right motivations. We haven't had the right encouragement. Our heart is not in the right spot. And so what are the conclusions that we come to in our own spirit? Do we, do we maintain and stay in this place or do we take an honest evaluation of where we're at and invite God into it? God, give me a pure heart. Lord, I want to see you. Are we pressing into the fellowship? This is the part of this pure heart and seeing God. If, if we're seeing God in the way we love our community and the way we love people, then that means we can't do it on our own. That means we have to be in community together. That means we have to press in. And is, are we in challenging times to do that? But we can't let it be an excuse not to press into relationships, not to put ourselves out there, not to be involved. Imagine if we didn't let our frustrations fester from the inside out. That we're able to be open and vulnerable and to, to evaluate, man, this is where I'm at. Lord, give me a pure heart. The blessings come when we get to an honest place where we just come to the throne room of Christ and just say, here I am, and we surrender. God wants to meet us in those broken hearts, whether we've been walking with Jesus forever. If we're not even sure about Jesus, he wants to meet you. He wants to walk with you. He says, confess with your heart. When I interact with people, do my words, do my actions, am I in it? Am I fully in it? Am I present and engaged? When I'm spending time with my family, my kids, my wife, friends, am I truly engaged or I give them the long glazed stare? When we have the long glazed stare, we sometimes miss God and the things right before us. Let me pray for us as I close out today. Lord. I just thank you that you sent your son, Jesus. That you sent your son, that we have this gift of repentance, God, that it's through your grace that we are forgiven, that we're not trapped in our mistakes, in our brokenness, in our struggles, in our challenges, God, but it's through your grace that we can walk into newness, into freedom. Lord, I pray that maybe we don't have the greatest motivation of why the way we lead and love and look for things in our life, but God, I pray that you give us that heart to be clean and clear. God, to see you in the small things and in the big things. God, I, I pray that we see you in the way that we treat and interact with other people. Lord, I thank you for what you are doing right now in our church family, that even online, do we have an opportunity to continue to grow and to, to be you in action here on earth. Lord, let me be blessed in my pure heart. God, let me see you in this week coming. In the more moments I'm alone with you, in the afternoon when I'm walking, in the time where I see laughter and I share joy with my friends. God, let me see you. Lord, I bless those listening right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me tell you, just like I said, when Jacob and I discussed this pure of heart, this scripture that he was giving us this morning, there were many good conversations. There were a few hard conversations. There were moments that I just had to ponder. I just had to sit and think, hmm, how am I being Christ-like? How is my heart? Is it something that's appealing or is it something that's appalling? And you know what? I can tell you there have been moments in my life that are both and, moments in my marriage, moments in my parenting and friendships, but God is good and he has been doing a work in me year after year 
And I pray that he's starting to do that work in you as well. Take a moment to see what is your heart like right now. Do you need to ponder some things? Do you need to take a step back? I know before I touched on ways that we believe in growing and going here at the Heights. And in case you haven't seen it, our hub on Highway 2 is definitely growing. There's some demolition. There's some stuff getting built up. It's amazing what God is doing. But more than just growing in size, growing the building, there's ways to go into our community. And we're doing that by being the hands and feet, by serving, by giving. And yes, it's uncertain times right now. But I will tell you through this season, when I've continued to give, when I've continued to tithe, when I've continued to take the resources that I've had, no matter how high or low they are, but make sure to give my fruits to God, he has done some amazing things. We've been able to pay off things. We've been able to finish our transform pledge. We've been able to see real live needs being met through the resources that are given to our church. So if you do feel the desire to give, you can give right on our app. You can give safely. You can also mail checks into our P.O. box. Whatever this week looks like for you, whatever position your heart is in, I pray that God's wisdom rains down on you and that you can look back, you can check your heart, and you can forge forward knowing that God's going to wash you anew and give you a new heart, a new desire, and he will bring light to your life. I miss each and every one of you. I hope you're doing well.